Penang Island was very special. It sort of began about 200 over years ago, and it was a place that was opened up for all the communities of the world. And uh, someone who came there about a decade or so after it was opened was just amazed at the most varied uh, colors, cultures, languages that he found in this particular place. So that particular special flavor, uh, sometimes in many places in the world, is lost over history. But in Penang, uniquely, it continued. Uh, these communities were very early given uh, places of worship that were literally uh, next door to each other on the main street. So you found the remarkable things like the St. George's uh, Church, which was more linked with the Protestants, and next door to it was the uh, Cathedral uh, of the Assumption, which was with the Catholic Church. And then the, the Chinese community, with all their different dialects, they moved in. A Chinese Goddess of Mercy temple, and further down, several other Chinese clans uh, and their temples, and then a magnificent uh, mosque. Uh, that uh, the Cholias were associated uh, with, who came from South India, who were Muslims. And then you found uh, Hindu temples and a mosque from Aceh. So there was not only diversity in terms of the main religion, within each religion itself, that was amazing diversity. And sometimes when uh, the individual religions themselves are diverse, you find a certain kind of openness yeah. Uh, that uh, makes the sort of ocean of diversity much more complex uh, and, uh, and it breaks up into many, many smaller pieces that it allows to be manageable. Yeah? Uh, so each community had a legacy that was also rooted in occupations and places to stay around that area. And one other special thing, uh, people not only came for job opportunities, uh, they also came here as refugees. So it became not only a place for opportunity, it also became a place for protection. Uh, and, uh, and that gave it a certain uh, flavor of also respect and care and kindness and gratefulness, uh, all those things that make uh, a place special. And uh, that togetherness is uh, still there now and very vibrant. And one was one of the things that led to uh, UNESCO declaring it as a World Heritage Site. I grew up uh, in that street with the temples, the churches, and you grew up with uh, the mosques, and, and you grew up with a call to prayer, you grew up with the bells, the drums, uh, all the cultural celebrations, and, and I was just surrounded by them. And it made me someone who felt very comfortable with diversity. And so how is it that we're not really uh, maybe celebrating such a great strength? We have this wonderful uh, asset uh, where we have these two centuries of uh, harmony and, uh, and I think it would be wonderful to celebrate it as a street of harmony. And one of the frameworks that we had was taking all the common values of different religions and central to that uh, we took the golden rule. Treat other people like you would like to be uh, treated and, uh, and that I think uh, resonated with everybody because the moment you think about would you like to be treated like that? You begin to wonder, hey, uh, let's be nice to each other. I had the uh, uh, privilege of s taking uh, the former president of India, President Kalam, for a walk down the street. And uh, when he took that walk, uh, he went to each of the religious institutions and he read a prayer in each one of those places. And, and uh, he, at the end, he said, I, I have not seen a place in the world, he says, uh, that could be a better uh, message for humanity. And that all these different religions, their sounds, you know, their thoughts are all living side by side, uh, spreading what would be the common values of religions. Mm -hmm.